This video will be about treating gout. Before watching this video, unless you are already familiar with gout, I recommend watching two of my videos, one about hyperuricemia, the other about gout. Let's begin with how to treat a gout flare. A flare is caused by the body's white blood cells attacking the uric acid crystals accumulated in joints, resulting in inflammation of the joint, causing pain, swelling, redness, and warmth of the joint. Therefore, the goal is to stop the body's white blood cells from attacking the crystals. There are three medications we can utilize, glucocorticoids, nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and colchicine. No one method is superior in completing the job. Therefore, your doctor will choose based on each medication's side effects. We'll start with glucocorticoids. One thing that's great is they can be injected right into the inflamed joint, resulting in the quickest resolution of symptoms. Reasons not to pick. An increased risk of infection, decreased wound healing, frequent flares, and a medical history of heart failure, high blood pressure, or diabetes. Now let's switch over to NSAIDs. Reasons not to pick NSAIDs include taking medications that increase your risk of bleeding. In addition, having a medical history of kidney disease, liver disease, peptic ulcer disease, heart failure, or high blood pressure. Now let's switch over to colchicine. Colchicine isn't helpful if the symptoms began more than 24 hours ago. Also, colchicine shouldn't be selected if the patient is taking P450 or P3A4 medications. Lastly, colchicine shouldn't be picked if the patient is pregnant, breastfeeding, and has a history of kidney or liver disease. Real quick, I lied about there only being three. There is a fourth one, but it's used as a last resort. Key point of this lesson, the sooner, the better. Here, you can see how long it will take the medications to work. It depends on how long after the symptoms started it took to begin treatment. Without medications, the symptoms can last up to three weeks. The next point. Your doctor will continue treatment two to three days after the symptoms are gone to prevent a recurrence. Glucocorticoids need more time, up to one to three weeks. Hooray, the symptoms are gone. However, all we did was stop the white blood cells from attacking the crystals. In other words, the crystals are still there and need to be addressed. But we don't start treating them until the flares occur almost twice a year. The goal is to lower the uric acid level in the blood. The lower the level, the faster the crystals will dissolve. Here are the goals based on whether or not the patient has TOFI. We have two methods of attack decreasing the creation of uric acid, and increasing its excretion. I understand that all this can be overwhelming, but you're doing great. So, lowering uric acid too quickly can cause a flare. This can be avoided by lowering the uric acid level slowly. Also, by taking an anti-inflammatory medication for three to six months. We have two anti-inflammatories we can choose from, colchicine, and aproxen. The first way we want to try lowering uric acid is with everyone's favorite lifestyle modifications. Drinking less alcohol, eating less red meat and seafood, and losing weight. Now, if lifestyle changes don't work, we have medications. We'll start with medications called xanthine oxidase inhibitors. Here's how they work. When the cells in our body die, the body breaks them down and chemicals like purine are released. Purine is converted by our body into hyposanthine, then xanthine, and then uric acid. Consider these purple minions as the chemical called xanthine oxidase. Xanthine oxidase inhibitors prevent purine from becoming uric acid by stopping xanthine oxidase. Two xanthine oxidase inhibitors that are used are allopurinol, and Febaxostat. Febaxostat is used second because it increases a person's risk of heart disease. Next, 
will tackle when not enough uric acid is being removed by the kidneys. In some instances, uric acid can return from the urine and back into the blood while in the kidney. We have a medication called perbenicid that helps keep uric acid in the urine. Another medication is piglotocase. Piglotocase helps make uric acid dissolve into the urine, allowing more uric acid to leave the blood. Here are all four medications we have covered. Now, let's cover the timeline. Urine begins to fall after two days and will reach stable levels in one to two weeks. After two to four weeks, your doctor will want to measure the uric acid level to see if doses need adjusting, then three months, then six months, and then annually. Once a normal uric acid level is achieved, the crystals will take years to dissolve. I was surprised to learn the crystals take years to fully dissolve, but I learned that piglotocase can shorten the timeline from years to months. However, it's not regularly used and I wanted to find out why. One reason I found is that 5% of patients experience anaphylaxis, a severe allergic response. But still, I think it's worth trying while the patient is still in the hospital. Then I asked the big question and learned that the price tag has a range from 2700 to 26 k Last, treatment is usually for life but lifestyle changes have allowed some patients to no longer need meds. Now, this video is longer than usual. I would appreciate you informing me how you like the duration and pacing up this video. And as always, thank you for watching.